over here. We're going to start off over here with a, the first Rashi in Chumash. The first Rashi in Chumash asks a question, and there's a very famous Rashi, and the subject of it is actually Parsha Sachodesh. Parsha Sachodesh, we um, discuss the ideas of Pesach. And in fact, there's a question which is asked, why is it called Parsha Sachodesh? According, if you look inside, and what it discusses is the halachas in general about Pesach. And um, why is it called Parsha Sachodesh? But there's many answers given to that question. This question is asked by Reb Tzodek. It's asked by many of the Chesidish of the But there's something about a Chodesh, which is what I'd like to come to explain today. Rashi, in the beginning of Chumash, tells us that the Torah should have started from HaChodesh Hazel Lachem, Shehi Mitzvah Rishonesh, and it's Tavu Bo Yisrael. The Torah should have started from there because that's the first mitzvah. Why does it say, why does it start from Horatius? To tell the Goyim that we have a right to Eretz Yisrael. I mean, that's a lot of words just to say we have a right to Eretz Yisrael. Now, um, is that a given assumption that all that the Torah should be is a textbook of halachas? I think the question is why did it start from there? Not that, not that it had to not say all this, but first start with the mitzvahs and then deal with the background stuff. Why, why, why I, I, I accept your answer, but why would you say that that's what it's saying? It's not what it says. It says that, you know, it says it should have started from there. It, exactly. It, exactly. He means by starting. That's his point. Uh, so, no, it's, no uh, well, if that would be the answer, so then the, if that would be the question, so then the answer would be that we went in the chronological order. If at some point the Torah would tell us that, if at some point the Torah would tell us the answer, that we, that we can answer the guy that it's ours, so then the question is taken care of. All right. It says the Torah should have started from over there. And it says start from over there. But that's what I would assume. I like your answer. I like your answer, you know, from the creativity part. But here, this is, again, I'll just mention the question for all the guys who came late. Um, I know I got stuck in traffic. That was probably why you all came late. So we'll tell you, you know, the internet has a lot of traffic, obviously. Um, but the bottom line, the question is, Rashi says we should have started the Torah from a Chodesh HaZelochem. Is the Torah just supposed to be a textbook? If somebody would have asked me a question, what is the point of Sefer Bereshis? I would say we have to learn Midos, we have to learn. There's a lot of things that we learn from Sefer Bereshis. This just what Rashi says, um, just in case the Goyim are going to say that we're thieves, right? we can answer them, HaKadosh Baruch gave it to us. You know, we had to have a whole voracious. I think we could have left out like Yitzchak and Yaakov. I mean, just to make that statement, we could have just made Bereshis, Brisbane Absorim, and went down to Mitzrayim, and that would have been it. And we could have saved ourselves. You know how many weeks of uh, uh, of Shurim I would have missed out if we wouldn't have had all this Bereshis? So why should it start with Achayin Shazal Lachem? And I, the answer, the simple answer, which everybody, I think, at least this is the way I always understood it, because that's the first mitzvah, and the Torah is here for mitzvahs. Tonight, I'm challenging that assumption. I don't think that that's why the Torah should have started with HaKadosh HaZelachem. HaKadosh HaZelachem is more than just the first mitzvah. And that's what I would like to discuss tonight. And this is Be'etzem, the subject of Parshish HaKadosh, which is this week.
יוכל מראש חיידש. תלמוד לא אמר ביום ההוא. אם ביום ההוא, יוכל מבית יום. תלמוד לא אמר בשל שיש מעצה ומורה מונחו מפנחו. In English, one would have thought that we started, we should start saying the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim from Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Why in the world should we have started from Rosh Chodesh Nisan? Anybody out there not on mute? Okay. That's when Hashem talked to Moshe. Huh? He talked About to Moshe. This. He talked to Moshe and Shemois too. I mean, re very relevant to Pesach itself. That's when he started talking to him. No, not from Rosh Chodesh. No, the first thing uh, you know. Well, uh, uh, he gave he gave a tzivui on it, but 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 that's but that didn't was, happen. Nothing happened. But that wasn't part of that schalta of the. Uh, I don't know. You know what? Whole, if, if, uh, I want to tell you something. If if if. If the if the Haggad would have said that Yacha we should start from um, the time that we know if we had a date from when the first Maka was given. In other words, is there something in Rosh Chaydesh? I, I agree with what you're saying is true, that that was when the tzivu, there were tzivuim that were given. But what does that have to do with what we're doing now? Because that's we're supposed to start Pesach cleaning. What is what does Rosh Chaydesh do with anything? It's it's also a mitzvah. That's not like a makets or something that happened to the other guy. What, what mitzvah? A Rosh Chodesh? Does that mitzvah Rosh Chodesh have any of the Uh Yeah, it's a symbol of independence that they have their own calendar. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, Hashem, Hashem gave over the calculation of everything to them. No? Oh, okay. All right. I like that's I like that. that that's can you elaborate on that? Well, it, 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 they, the, the calculation of the days, the holidays, when Rosh Chodesh comes in, what happens afterwards, was not given to them until that point. And at that point, that was a sign of independence, that they would establish the calendar. Okay. I'm with you. Um, this is, I'm going in your direction. You can give me a ride. Okay. Mel, give me a ride. Okay, this is where I'm going. I believe that this is the root of the issue. And um, I would like to um, take issue with what Parrot said, and in part take issue with what you said, and explain that independence is not the issue of what Kal Yisrael needed. Klal Yisrael did not need to be independent as a nation on, unto its own. Tan, Klal Yisrael needed to be a unique nation. Okay, now I'd like to explain what you all know. I, was just, I want to break this down to simple. Um, you know, the Chinese have their calendar too. There's nothing unique about their calendar, except that's in Chinese. Right? There's nothing unique about their calendar, so to speak, more than any other nation. And Klai Yisrael is not supposed to be a nation like other nations. Klai Yisrael is different, and I, I just have this as a, um, uh, we'll start with it, you know, you have baseball teams, okay? So each one is different, they have their own characteristics, but they're all the same. You have football teams. Again, they're all the same. They just each one's a little bit different. Baseball and football, they have something in common that they're sports. But you're going to say, you know, oh, what's the connection between baseball and quantum mechanics? So most of us would say we could do neither. That's the connection between them. <laughs> we have no shaykhs to either of them. But uh, there has to be some kind of a connection. Klal Yisrael and the other nations are not on the, in the same league, in the same game. There's something totally different. And that which is totally different happened in the world 
that Klal Yisrael was empowered to be in charge. Now, this is the statement that I just said today. This is what I would like to come to an understanding on it by the time that we're finished over here tonight. I'm going to start off with something in Parshas HaShavua. V'ha'malacha haya dai v'hoyse. The malacha, which they, you know, for the, um, for the uh, building of the Beis HaMikdash was enough, and there was extra. Now, that is a stira. Either it was enough or it was extra. And the Rishonim said, well, maybe we're saying first it was enough and then it was extra. And they refute that and they give a variety of explanations. Some of the commentators, listen to this. This is an amazing thing. How much money should you give to the Beis HaMikdash? At least 10%. Well, where do you get that from? I don't know. I mean, that's that's what uh, that's that's where it's all. You got to give stock you 10%, and if uh, you want to give more, you give up to 20%. This is Tzedakah? Giving yeah. to the Beit Hamidish is Tzedakah? Uh, why, why wouldn't it be considered Tzedakah? Well, you know, the problem with you is you're an American. You say, do I get a deduction for my taxes or not? That's 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 where everything starts and ends, right? <laughs> I just yes, I'm going to attack you right now. Okay. Um, the Reb Chaim Tzanzer, he would never go to sleep if he had any money. His house, anything he had, he always gave it to Tzedakah. So somebody one time asked him, uh, "But you're not supposed to give more than a tenth." So he says that's true, but Mokam Kuach Nefesh, you're allowed to give more. So they asked him, what's the Pekuach Nefesh? So he said, Avoyncha b'tzedaka prog. The Pazik, the, the Chazal said, if you didn't have air, you should give tzedaka. I did have Averis, so I'm giving tzedaka not because I'm giving my donations. I'm protecting myself. <laughs> so there's no, there's no, why do we have a base of Mikdash? Because Klal Yisrael did an Avera, and Klal Yisrael, Akash Baruch Hu had to Instead of living in each and everybody's house, he had to make his, a, 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 a place that was Kurdish for itself where he could live. That's a charity? No, don't take it personal. <laughs> I just say, it's not, it's not tzedakah. Tzedakah is for poor people. This is for you. That's like saying, you know, if someone, is, yes, I'm picking on you again, okay? Because I like what you said, so we're going to start there. How much money should you spend on a present for your wife? No more than 10% because it's stuck up. That's not stuck up. No way. Well, what is, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, so in other words, the, how much money is, how much money should you spend on a present for your wife? <laughs> That's as much as you can afford. That's right. Exactly. That's an excellent right. question. Exactly. That's an excellent question. And no, that, that's actually an answer, right? What does that right. mean? I just like, I want to take that answer apart. And what it means is that there is no cap on the present that you should give for your wife. The reason why you don't give her everything is because you can't afford it. Right. But what you're paying is not signifying the value of the relationship. The relationship demands really more than you're giving. But it's not a personal. <laughs> okay, is, that, is it clear what, I, what I'm saying at least over here? This is a very important concept. So now, when Klai Yisro gave to the Mishkan, how much did they want to give? As much as they can afford. They want to give everything. They're only able to give what they can afford. Right. But they want to give more. So right now I'm quoting from Chassidish sources which will stay illicit in their names. 
the Chassidim explain that Malacha Haya Dayom. No one's enough. Vahoyser means that Hakadosh Baruch Hu considered that which they wanted to give as if they gave it to. Hakadosh Baruch Hu pitched in for their desire. I really want to give everything, but I can't because I need money. I have to buy breakfast for tomorrow. Hakadosh Baruch Hu considered like you gave that money for your breakfast for tomorrow too. There was also that aspect that the Mayor Shapiro says where that machshava of desire to give more actually played itself out. Now, I would like to explain something which has always bothered me, and I heard something this week that actually explained it to me. Akadosh Baruch Hu is a ruchnius entity. How can he uh, fit into a physical bias called the base of Ekdash. Okay, you got the question? I mean, even the, the words that I'm using to question are almost border on Kfira in, in the exactness, but just the concept, the concept is a, it's a very good question. And the answer is that by the fact that there was what's called the Nadivas Halev, which is discussed in this week's Parsha. Right. So that makes it not just a physical building, just like, excuse my uh, nivel peh, my vulgar language, there was matching in their donations. You now they gave what they gave, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu filled in the rest. So the bias, the Mesa Migdash, was actually a Ruchni's bias, which was even bigger than its physical parameters. Are you people with me? Yes. Okay. It, it, so I say something. It's a hard concept because he can fit into everything, but he can't. Uh, 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 he's not. I don't know. He's not really in there, but he is in there. Kodesh Baruch is in there, but he's not really in there because because it's not physical. There's nothing physical. That would place him into the in, into that location. That's 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 the question. That's the question, and the answer is that even that physical bias also is important. It's a piece of something greater. And just like when we gave, there was a ruchnis matching from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the Beis Hamidrash itself has a ruchnis aspect to it, which is not defined in the physical, just like. The physical expression of this in the base of Hamikdash was the, you know, Kodesh Baruch Hu didn't have a problem to build the Merpeset out. He didn't have a problem to deal with the Iriya, right? He could have made the base of Hamikdash whatever size he wanted, the Mishkan whatever size he wanted. So why did he cramp it and make the Kodesh Hakadoshim that the Oren doesn't fit in? Let's make it a little bit bigger. No, he wanted to show us that even though it doesn't fit in, it fits in anyways. There's a lesson that he's showing us. So even the physical aspect of the Beis Hamikdash was spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Jewish calendar, besides for it being a calendar like all other calendars, it's a spiritual calendar. What does that mean? I'll just start with the um, with the. Uh, Classical thing that when the season, when the day comes around, so there's a Ruchnis energy in that day. There's a special koach of Geula on Tezvav Nisan every year. There's a special koach of, uh, of Purim every year on Yudalid Adar, etc. Why? Because it's not just a, a way to mark off time as time goes linearly. Time revolves around the spiritual circle and comes back to the same point. This is what's happening. Now, um, I would like to make a statement about Eretz Yisrael. You're right now going to hear a little bit of tzioyness over here. So all you guys have been waiting. You could hear it now. How come everybody woke up? Anyways, <laughs> um, the 
it's a double pushet that this country that we live in makes absolutely no sense. I just, you know, I would like to make a statement about, I don't think you call it a miracle. If you think that it makes any sense that here in Israel, they have the highest amount of vaccines over anywhere in the world, including the countries that produce it, you're out of your mind. Just think about it. Is that normal? Netanyahu says, I did it. Now, you know, maybe we should vote for Murat Tamulat Bukhiris. I'm not right now discussing, but we, I think that everybody who's listening here understands that that's Yad Hashem. It makes no sense, period. Period. Explain whatever you want to explain. It doesn't make sense. It only makes one sense because HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves Kal Yisrael. So he could even wrap it up. Yes, his father was a Holocaust survivor and da, 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 and and HaKol Ovev B'Sheket and B'Shalom. We're living through an S. I don't think that what I'm saying right now is a Chiddush to anybody at all. I think this is a Dover Pasha. But it has to be pointed out. That's one thing. I'm talking about things that we have seen. There was a financial crisis the world over about 10 years ago. All the countries of the only economy that was booming was here in Israel. Now, Israel has no natural resources. Israel's economy feeds on all of the other economies of the United States and Europe, etc. And if they are all out of business, so we should be out of business. But that's not what happened. You know why? Because we're not part of the regular cycle. Eretz Yisrael is not a regular piece of land. Eretz Yisrael is Kodosh. It works, it sings the different tune. Eretz Yisrael is Eini Hashem Lokecha Bo Mirech Yishona Rach Yishona. And it's not just a cute thing that a Kodesh Boch who made it, that Eretz Yisrael can expand and contract according to the Ruchnis of Kal Yisrael. It's a Ruchnis country. When Goyim were here, this could look at this historically. When the Goyim were living here in Eretz Yisrael, it was desolate. Only when Jews live here does it prosper. And Chazal says, this is, this is not normal. Period. It's just not normal. But of course it's not normal because it's not a normal piece of land. It's Eretz Yisrael. It's Eretz Yisrael. It goes with a different tune. It's not a place of Gashmias. It's a place of Ruchnias. And the Ramban tells us about this in many places. I like to read a Ramban. Okay? I think that this share is, is uh, recorded. So I don't know when you're going to hear me speak about the subject again, but it's worthwhile when we'll speak about it. The Ramban in Parshas Achrei Mois Anybody wants to see a Ramban, that's fascinating. He discusses all the other nations have Malochim. is the ruler of all rulers. I will Eretz Yisrael empty us Hayishuv. Eretz Yisrael is in the middle, the focal point. Vinachlas Hashem miuchedes lishmo. Klal does not have it, any kind of a ruler at all. And he gave it to Klal Yisrael, which is like no other nation. We have to quote Mark Twain to speak about the invincible Jew. How can the Jew be invincible? How can he be invincible? He is a Dabar Ruchni. 
Shmoy Zera Oyavo, Vizesh to Omer, Vayisem Li Segula Mikola Amin. Now, this I'm taking my issue with parrots and mel. It's not a question of independence. We are a Segula. We are a totally different kind of a nation with a totally different kind of a position. <coughs> You're not going to have any under rulers. That lives in Because Eretz is a more Ruchnius place, you have more Ruchnius. It's a fantastic Ramban. Whoever doesn't know it, you should learn it by heart. All of you people living in Eretz Yisrael, you should appreciate where you are. Anyways, the, uh, let's just start from over here. When is it? Now I'm going to back to what Mel said. When is it that it started this idea that Klal Yisrael are cut out of a different bolt of cloth? HaChodesh HaZelochem. HaChodesh HaZelochem is when Klal Yisrael became in charge of running the world in a ruchniistic way that we can actually change physical things that are here through by the Kaddish the Chodesh, and the Gemara discusses this in many ways. The world of Torah was born with HaChodesh HaZelochem. So when Rabbi Yitzchak asks in Bereshis, the Torah should have started with HaChodesh HaZelochem, is it merely because it was the first mitzvah? This is the world. Anything that happened before, the world was running on a different tune. And that is irrelevant. That was Rabbi Yitzchak's question, the first question in Rashi and Chumash. Why didn't we start with this? It's not a question that you just need mitzvahs. We need to have the real world that we have. And that happened with the Chodesh HaZelochem. What happened on Pesach? Klal Yisrael became an independent nation. That is a step towards a completion of having Klal Yisrael run the world on a spiritual level. I'd like to quote the Rogachover. The Rogachover says something which is amazing. He says Klal Yisrael did not become a full nation even after Kabbalah Satoira until they came to Eretz Yisrael. Why is that so? And he says something which is fascinating and simplistic. Every nation has to have a homeland. The homeland contains, defines, and expresses the people that are within it. So until Kal Yisrael came to Eretz Yisrael, Klal Yisrael wasn't complete. It's only when we came to the land that that land's personality is mirrors our personality and we had a perfect fit did we become a nation. So HaKodesh HaZelochem is the beginning of the metamorphosis of a regular nation turning into the Am HaNivchar. The Am Segula. Yochol Merosh Chodesh. What we're going to say in the Agoda this year, that maybe we should start from Rosh Chodesh, it's a very simple thing. That was when the prophet process started. It wasn't just that we were given mitzvahs. Kiddush HaChodesh is an amazing thing. I would like to share with you something from the sitter. Let me just get a sitter over here. 
I know that I own one in my house. I have a sitter, I possess one. I found on the shell, on the case. Okay, this is a question for Arye Beer and for Yishalperin. I think that those are the two guys who consider themselves Chazonim. Okay. I see nobody else got insulted. <laughs> Listen to this. We say in Rosh Chodesh benching. So that's why you guys sing this so you should know what you're saying. Hello, what's that doing in Rosh Chodesh Benching? That's a very nice, a very nice tefillah. Uh, How come that's the introduction to Rosh Chodesh Benching? Arya, you ever had that question? Never heard that question. But it's like a good question, right? It's a great question. By the way, I'll just tell you what somebody I heard from my say on this. What do you mean, Misha Asa Nisan Labasenu? Anybody have any guess who that is? Who could fill in the blank? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Asa Nisan Labasenu. What does Misha Asa Nisan, an ambiguous, Persona? Right. That is connected to Kiddush al Khaydish in the uh, oh. Right. To that. That's right. That's why we're here tonight. Right? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Right. Okay, so the purpose, the, what was the purpose of all of the miracles in Mitzrayim? To prove that our Kaddish Baruch Hu runs the world, right? Misha also needs in Lavoy Seinu. The whole Lila Seder is there to prove who is in charge and who is Amanivcha. That's what it's all about. How does it all happen? And it happens through Kiddush HaKhoidosh. When Kalal Yisrael is empowered and we do what we're supposed to do. That's what's going on in Shabbos Mavarchim. That's, that's, we have the fourth parsha. We have the fourth parsha of, of Chodesh. So this year, it falls out on Rosh Chodesh. It's like an extra, an extra, um, it's a special day that we have Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, it's the start of a gula. And I, I'm just saying it, I said, you know, I'm here in Yisrael, and that's a special schuss to be here. You know, my ancestors weren't able to do what I can do. And I'd be thankful for that. But I have to do what I can do. We can make it happen. As we enter the Chodesh that has the Koyach of Gula, we have Shabbos Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We should say, who he got a son of the cabbage, you know, Haley Baba Campus Oretz, Haverim call you so. We should all come together as one nation and be Mamla Hakadish Borhu and have that Amuna in the Schoedish of Amuna and believe that Hakadish Borhu can get us out of this. We should be Zoycha Mirz Hashem as I stand here and I look at my boxes of matzah. And as I say every year when we finish baking matzahs, I hope not to use these matzahs this year. All my matzahs are tummy. Mashiach should come and I have to bake new matzahs. Now, could very well be, it could be two days before Mashiach, beforehand, maybe Tumahut to Betibo, they eat the matzahs, there's a whole question about that. It's only on the carbon, what about the matzah? But as of right now, I want to be a on all my matzahs and have matzahs that were made the Kedusha with Tyra. We should have our Beis Hamikdash and bring the Korban Pesach. And as we say, our Shchodesh, our, 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 our Tfilis on Rosh this week, we should understand that we were given the power to be in charge and to change the world. Ciao,